The Handmaid's Tale is back for its an highly anticipated fourth season, which further explores the grim, brutal realities of Gilead and the effects it has on its sufferers, both within and outside of its parameters, while also delivering much needed moments of payoff and justice. I'm Luca Giliberti, contributing writer at Gold Derby, and I'm joined today by Madeline Brewer, who stars as Janine on the show. So, Madeline, the great thing about being part of a regular series is that if you're lucky, you get to play a character across multiple seasons. So what has been the most rewarding or exciting aspect of being able to return to this show and to this character year after year? You know, getting to know Janine has been one of like the greatest joys of my life. Um, and now after four seasons, you know, spending years with her, it's been such a, I mean, it's been delicious and challenging and um, she invigorates me and she frustrates me when you, you know, you kind of can't find her. And, and so it's been, um, it's been a really like a, a huge learning experience as well for me as a woman, um, the woman that Janine is, is the kind of woman I want to be. Um, she is loyal and brave and and vulnerable and I, I learn from her all the time. Wow, that, that's amazing. And, and did you know her in and out the moment you slipped into her shoes in the first season when you first played her? Or, or have you really truly only discovered her over the course of these four seasons? Over the course of the four seasons, I think, because especially in the first season, you know, we see a Janine, a very traumatized Janine. We see a defense, you know, I, we see Janine who is operating entirely um, in a, like a trauma response in, um, you know, in, we, with defense mechanisms and coping mechanisms. And um, we don't see the real Janine. I feel like what we're seeing this season with her is more of the real Janine, much more grounded. Um, so yeah, I was like trying to get to know her through all the trauma, like really having to dig down there and, and find out who this woman is. Um, which caused me to do a lot of work on myself. You know, the, I can only, you know, that saying, it's like, you can only meet, like, you can only meet someone who's, <laughs> it's something <laughs> like, you can only meet someone as deep as they've met themselves. Yes. Something like that. Yes. So it's like to find that in Janine, I had to go within me, you know, to meet her there. And um, that has been like, an incredible experience, but also like so rewarding. And I feel like Janine is like the sister I don't have, you know, wow. the sister I never had. Wow, wow, that's that's a very interesting process. And mm -hmm. and speaking uh, of this fourth season now, uh, at the beginning of the season, she, June, and the other handmaids uh, are on the run, and they mm -hmm. betake themselves to this farmhouse that is run by Mrs. Keys. Where is Janine mentally at that point in time? And what, which emotions does she undergo as they, um, or during their stay at this farmhouse? You know, I, I feel like um, we're clearly still in Gilead at the farm, but it's like the further away that we get from the Gilead we've known, mm -hmm. the closer Janine comes back to herself. You know, even in like episode five, as we enter Chicago, Janine is the most Janine, real Janine. Um, the, like the, the farther the geography plays out between the two, the, the further the distance between Janine and Gilead, the closer she, come, she comes back to herself, the closer she gets to herself. And um, I don't know if I answered the question. No, that's that's very good. I just there were so many fa uh, interesting scenes uh, in those first two episodes between. Her... Oh, you were asking about the beginning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. You know, okay. I think that you know, very very traumatizing to watch your your very close friend and someone that you love, like a sister, be shot, and you know, mm -hmm. to kind of I think that it, um, Janine had to step up as June was kind of down for the count, mm -hmm. and I think that it it taught Janine, you know, I, I can contribute to this. I am, I'm here with these women. I'm not just tagging along. Like we are in this together and I'm, I've got power too, and I can make my own decisions and I can step up when they need me. And, and it's not just, um, 
it's not just, oh, crazy Janine coming along for the ride. It's like, no, each of these women plays a, a pivotal role in the survival of the group. And I think Janine is embracing that more. I also think that she's enjoying, as Alma says, I think in episode one or two, she's in, enjoying her freedom. And maybe this is as free as we're going to get. And I think Janine recognizes that and, and um, is embracing just to be able to let her hair out right. and um, be just be free with her friends. Right. And you already mentioned Alma just now. And a big turning point for Janine really is when uh, Brianna, Alma, and two other handmaids are hit by a train in the third episode after they led by June, try to escape. And what we get afterwards are really these two episodes that explore this complicated but beautiful relationship between June and Janine. Talk us through the complexities of this relationship and the conversations you had with Elizabeth Moss, who plays June while uh, preparing for this arc. I, yeah, so those, um, I mean, I was just telling Lizzie earlier, like I just, I don't like yelling at you and, uh, and, um, you know, but, but it was a, it was a powerful moment and an important moment that Lizzie and I talked about of, of, um, you know, June at this point is she's really, she's really motivated by revenge and by anger. And she's also, uh, and has been for four seasons motivated by saving her daughter. But in this moment, getting to the front and wanting to go to the front of a war and risking it all and risking lives and and you know sacrificing lives to do that i think that janine as a friend is like a little worried about her and is kind of and is also like hey i've just followed you blindly for a long time and i don't know i don't know about you right now so uh i think that that's um a very very important turning point for janine to think you know what i may have to look at this um a little more closely uh, and not just follow June so blindly. Um, but the, that relationship between the two of them is so powerful because there's like, there's a maternal energy to it, but it's like, they're really close friends, but June feels responsible for Janine and, and Janine, you know, there's like a maternal element of, of, I sometimes feel like almost like Janine is, is a placeholder for Hannah for, like, okay, if I keep Janine alive, then, you know, I can get to Hannah, you know, yeah. trauma does weird stuff to your brain. Um, so I think it's like, and also allowing, um, allowing Janine to step into the role of, of like a co-person instead of someone that June has to take care of, I think was like a little humbling for June recognizing Janine's autonomy, especially in episode five and what Janine can contribute and what she really wants out of her life. And um, they don't want the same things. Um, and we see that and that like heartbreaking scene for us to leave each other. It just breaks mm -hmm. my heart every time, even though I know, yeah. I know what happens, but um, yeah, it was, um, we had some really, really wonderful conversations about just kind of where we both are mentally at that time and how far we've come, everything we've been through. Um, it was a beautiful moment, I feel like, for me as an actor to be able to say, to really honor Janine's growth at that time, which was really special, you know? Um, she still says her silly little lines, like, I'm not a mushroom. Yeah. But yeah. she... She knows what she's saying. She knows what she's talking about. And, and you, you mentioned that very emotional goodbye scene or farewell scene. Why does she decide to leave Stephen's camp after all and join June? Is it really just this love for her, for June that prevails in the end? I think that, um, I think that Janine sees June very clearly and sees that her friend is, uh, tormented by this need to first of all get Hannah back of course but um to take these mother efforts down and it's just it it's it it permeates her being June's being um and I think Janine sees it I think that she sees how how tormented June is by that and she's like I'm not gonna let my friend go through this alone and also I think that that feeling of like 
you don't know what you got till it's gone. And the second June leaves and she's really gone. Janine's like, no, no, actually, no. I thought I could, I can't do it. That is my sister. We have been through so much together and wherever this ends, we will see it through to the end together. Mm -hmm. Even though she says, and I think she does mean it. I feel safer when we're together because also Janine, Janine, I always say Janoon. I, I, get I it. really do. <laughs> yeah. June, uh, it's our Benefer name. Like it's yeah, Janoon. Exactly. Um, I think that uh, that June saved Janine from a lot of pain and heartache and quite literally saved her life mm -hmm. on more than one occasion. And I, I, Janine knows that. She's aware. And I think she does really feel like my best shot isn't here. It's great to be here in Chicago, but my best shot and the happiest I will be is with June. Wow. And, and you already mentioned earlier that this really is the se season of us realizing that we should not underestimate uh, Janine. Yeah. So, she is so strong and you re her strength really shines through throughout. And um, yeah, and I'm sure you've been channeling the, the strength since the very beginning, but what did it mean to you to finally get to unload it and display it in such a big way this season? It was really, it was very special. It was very special. I've always said, and I've always maintained that Janine has fire. She's yes. got embers still burning. Um, and, and I think when we see her in season one and parts of season two, they are just embers and Gilead has tried to extinguish her flame and to get her to when she gets to kind of unleash that raw, fiery energy. Um, you know, Janine, we see so clearly in episode four that this woman knows how to make decisions for herself. She knows what is best for her. She is self-possessed. She is, um, she's been through it. And um, you should never underestimate her. Yeah. Um, Never underestimate someone who's been with Janine, been through what Janine has been through, yeah. who has like before and during and in Gilead. I mean, I, I, she's just, she's been through so much. And that's what I mean that I, I learn from her and I grow from her because I watch this woman endure and endure and endure and um, persist and persevere. And it's, oh, it just, it, it's breathtaking to me. Yeah. Well, we should Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 please. Well, we shouldn't, we should have known not to underestimate Janine at the moment she leveled the F-bomb at uh, Aunt Lydia in the uh, series premiere. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and that's the, that one scene has been my, in the back of my mind in every scene I've played with her is that that's Janine. Mm -hmm. That's what she thinks of Gilead. Right. And speaking of strength, how was it finally getting, uh, to, uh, being able to tap into Janine's backstory this season? And, and what do the bits and pieces we got from her backstory tell us about present day Janine? Mm. I think that one of, the, one of the most important pieces of her backstory for me is that what I said earlier, really, that, that this woman is aware of her autonomy and, um, knows that she knows what is best for her. Um, and uh, to, to watch her do that in the face of, in my backstory, in the face of manipulation and intimidation for her to still know what is best for her and for her son, because that's Janine, you know, and I, I Janine has always been first and foremost, she's a mom, she's a mother and she loves her children. She loves being a mom. And she wants, she will do what is best for them. Um, so getting to own that power and that autonomy and that, um, that womanhood, you know, that um, it really moved me. And I was really proud to be trusted with that story um, because, and I, you, people say this and I say it, somebody, you know, has had an abortion. They may not have told you somebody, you know, has had an abortion and, it's um, such a taboo thing to talk about women being in control of their lives and their bodies and their organs. Um, 
And, you know, we see it's still seeing it all the time right now that Amy Coney Barrett is a freaking, she's like Serena Joy in the flesh. It's unbelievable. Exactly. Yeah, um, exactly. It's just, it's, it's, it baffles me and it's haunt, it's haunting. Right. Um, but I am bolstered by Janine and by her decision-making, her knowledge of herself, her love for her child. So that, um, I'm really, pr I'm really proud of her. And, and did you have this backstory in mind uh, since the, the get-go? Did you know that you were going to explore this backstory at one point? No. I, I know your co-star, Ann Dowd, for example, uh, has talked about how Bruce Miller, the showrunner, told her early on that uh, her character, Aunt Lydia, was a teacher in, in pre-Gilead mm -hmm. life, which really helped her craft that character. Um, did you have similar conversations uh, with Bruce in the first season or before the first season, or did you really construct the backstory with help of the source material only? I definitely, um, what I love about Bruce and, and um, something that he told me very early on is that Janine is based on someone that, that he knows from his past, like mm -hmm. just somebody he's known. Um, and I do that as well. Like I, I have a piece of almost every person I've ever met as we all do, but I have pieces of every person I've ever met in my characters. You know, I pull from everywhere. Um, when people try and make fun of me for being so heavily on TikTok, like constantly, <laughs> that's character study. Yeah. You know, that is to me invaluable. I'm watching people's lives on an app where they'll just let it out. And I mean, there's, there are TikTokers that are, you know, part of characters that I, that I played. Um, and so, uh, but no, the, the backstory, um, I didn't make any real concrete decisions about her. Um, okay. because, you know, I didn't, I knew a backstory would come eventually and I didn't want to be like thrown off or anything, but, uh, I knew that she'd worked like at a Denny's uh, like at a, like she does, you know, at a, I knew she was a waitress, um, or a server rather, that's probably more appropriate to say. Um, I, I knew that, and I knew that she struggled and I knew that she had a child and I knew that maybe that child was a result of, um, non-consensual, um, sex mm -hmm. or, um, definitely not planned, right. but I haven't made any of these decisions because I, it does not matter. Honestly, Janine loves that child, no matter where he came from. Right. And, and now based on everything we've seen throughout the series, especially this season, would you say that Janine is a determined survivor? Absolutely. Determined survivor. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. And, and do you feel like this, this uh, coping mechanism that you mentioned before, that this is part of this survival and that it really does create this counterbalance to, to June, who was who so oh, yeah. focused on, on uh, resistance rather than surviving in the moment, whereas Janine, yeah. she really tries to uh, make the best of the, her current situation. Would you say that's the case with her? Absolutely. And I think that it's a really great, we juxtapose each other well, I think, June and Janine. Because, you know, uh, June just wears that anger and that, uh, you know, hunger for revenge right out there. It's her focus. It's her goal. Um, and Janine is not revenge driven. She's love driven. Right. I guess you could say that June is love driven, which is why she wants revenge. But um, I think that we juxtapose each other really well in that. Um, because I, I sometimes feel like Janine is like the audience's brain. Like she's yes. kind of saying what I feel like I, as an audience member, want to say or do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or like, you know what? That's really troubling. I'm just going to sing this song over here and kind of pretend I'm somewhere else. Right. Um, I feel like she, she has to me, the most natural reaction to what's happening. Yeah. And I think especially this season when she, re she really did call out June on some of the decisions she's made. And I think mm -hmm. she really did speak for the audience in that case and for mm -hmm. many characters on the show. And just as a final question, um, you already mentioned that she's a very love-driven person. 
Um, mm -hmm. So as part of this coping mechanism, really also trying to find the light or, or looking for the light in the darkness that is Gilead. That is exactly what I've, how I've always, that's exactly it. Janine is light. She looks only for the light, for the silver lining at every moment. Um, I think especially in the first three seasons, we just see, we see a woman who is just by a thread, hanging on by a thread, but looking for that light. And that's power, that's fire, that's resistance. You know, the fact that she says, I'm not gonna kill myself today, that's, that is strength, that's resistance, that's fight. So uh, that's her, her mere existence is, 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 a, is a fight, is, a, is, a, is resistance in itself. Wow. Well, I think that is a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much for joining us, Madeline, oh, thank you, today. Okay. And to our viewers and listeners, make sure to go to goldderby.com to make your predictions. And before you go, click subscribe to watch all of our great chats with top contenders. Thank you so much. Thank you.